You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Big Bo has made its return to UNLV. Straight ahead in the Red Zone, we recap a perfect week for the running Rebels, including a little payback against UNR. Plus, we look ahead to a crucial game at Colorado State. And we sit down with freshman Jordan Cornish to find out what made him turn his focus to basketball at a young age. The Red Zone is following through, and we're ready to make it rain right now. This is the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Good evening. Welcome inside the Reb Zone. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you this week from inside the UNLV basketball offices, Kevin Bollier alongside running Rebels head coach Dave Rice. And coach, a 2-0 and week. We haven't had that in over a month, and it's got to be nice to see the momentum turning in the right direction again. Well, it started with a very, very good game at Reno on Tuesday. Got uh, contributions from a lot of different guys, and then uh, followed that up with a very good win against Air Force. Always a disciplined team. And uh, we were able to only turn the ball over five times against Air Force and get a very hard-fought victory. Well, let's start breaking the week down, beginning with Saturday night's game against Air Force, where the Rebels put in a very solid 40 minutes. UNLV and Air Force ready to match wins, and the Rebels stayed on the perimeter early. Rashad Vaughn with the three, followed by Cody Doolin knocking down a triple, as the Rebels' first five shots were from long distance without any touches inside. Meanwhile, Air Force did go inside. Justin Hammonds getting to the hoop on back-to-back -back possessions as this was tied early. After the under-12 media timeout, the Rebels refocused and Jalon Kendrick led the charge. The alley-oop to Chris Wood to get the crowd fired up. Then the dish to Pat McCaw for the bucket. And McCaw dropped the bomb as well as he drains the three. The Rebels played pretty solid defense and was energized with the zone, but it allowed Air Force to get some looks from three, and they hit six of 11 from long distance to stay in the game in the first half. Late in the first 20 minutes, crowd favorite Danley Walker provided a spark. The pass to Kendrick for the lay-in, and with just seconds left, Walker does what he does best, drain the triple. The fans go nuts. The Rebels had momentum as they rolled into the locker room up 29-24. In the second half, UNLV made sure to not have a lapse early and extended the lead to double digits. McCaw with the three from the corner, then Vaughn for three from the other corner. Even when they missed, the Rebels were in the right spot. Okanobo there for the follow slam. Wood had a nice second half. The offensive rebound and the putback hoop and harm. That would open the lead up to 11. Kendrick drove baseline for the reverse lay-in. And he went right to the hole and off the glass for two. Just over five minutes to go. Shot clock winding down. Doolin takes it to the rack and beats the buzzer. UNLV forces 15 turnovers and has only five themselves, outscoring Air Force 27 to three off those turnovers. A consistent effort throughout in a third straight win in the conference, 74 to 63. We gotta, you know, cut back on shooting threes and get it inside more. I think in the zone, guys tend to, when we just pass around the wing, when it comes down to the last shot, we just heave up a three, so. I think once we start working inside out, getting the ball in the middle and the post, the bigs, then the defense collapses and kick out threes, get better shots. Early on, I felt a little pressure. You know, every shot's got to go in, but you know now I've I've played a couple games and you know teammates make it easy for me and um, it's just fun to be back playing basketball again. You know? Most this week we just were basically in zone. We never really played man to man. And that's what we focused on, you know, making our zone a lot better. And that's what we played most of the game. So Air Force can be a scary team. They run the Princeton style offense. They do a lot of things that teams don't normally see. I thought that the running Rebels handled everything extremely well on Saturday night. I think it speaks volumes about the progress that our team has made. Uh, we only had two guys, uh, returning guys, who had played against Air Force before. And they're very... Uh, 
complex in terms of what they do, and it's always a difficult endeavor the first time, but I just thought we got sustained effort from a lot of different guys, countries from a lot of different guys, and I thought, again, a huge number with 16 assists and only five turnovers in the game. The energy level on both ends of the floor, but especially defensively, right out of the gate when you guys went into that zone and, and you came out on them and, and like glue a lot of the game. Well, we made the uh, decision to play a lot of zone in the game, to utilize our length and to try to keep Air Force away from the basket, try to contest as many shots as we could. And I think our defense has gotten so much better. Our activity in our zone was so much better. We were flying around and Air Force does a good job offensively, but we're able to force a lot of turnovers uh, from Air Force and actually get some points off turnovers in the game as well, which was the difference. The first five possessions and seven of the first eight three-point attempts without even the ball going inside the inside out if you will they were just all perimeter passing was that a concern and was that addressed at halftime because in the second half it seemed like the Rebels pounded it in much more yeah we didn't wait until halftime to address that and going into the game our, our, our philosophy was we want to attack we want to play inside out whether it's dribble penetration and kick it out or throw it on the block and kick it out the one thing when you play against zone you're gonna have to shoot some threes because the defense is compressed but we settled for too many and even the ones that we made it just becomes fool's gold and I thought the last 32 33 minutes of the game we were very efficient on the offensive end and we made plays for each other and you you think about Patrick McCaw and Cody Duell and Jalon Kendrick, Rashad Vaughn, all made plays for other guys, and I thought we did a much better job of getting the ball in the interior. And I thought Jalon Kendrick had a very complete game, as well as he, al he also played really well against Reno. All right, let's start talking about Reno, because Tuesday night the Rebels looking for a little revenge, trying to get their first win against the Wolfpack in a couple of years, and they came home victorious from the northern part of the state. The running Rebels came out with more focus and urgency than the first time these teams met. Chris Wood worked inside and off the glass to get the ball rolling. And Patrick McCaw knocked down a three as UNLV opened up an early 7-2 lead. A.J. West was a worry for the Rebs and he hit an early 10-footer. But West picked up his second foul less than four minutes into the game. That opened things up in the lane. McCaw goes to the hole and gets the roll. Then he drives and dishes to good luck Okonobo for the reverse lay-in. Okonobo gets the slam and the slap, although he missed the free throw for the three-point play. But Cody Doolin said, I'll give you a three-point play. He hits the triple. Dwayne Morgan goes to the bucket for two. And Jalon Kendrick got into the action with this three. Part of a 10-2 Rebel run opened up a double-digit lead. Every time UNR tried to answer, UNLV just turned to Okonobo, who had a nice first half. The hoop down low, then the 10-footer. A.J. West tried to keep it close as he goes inside. Then Michael Perez hit a three as Reno made sure the game didn't get away. Late in the first half, Jordan Cornish and Rashad Vaughn both scoring inside. Just before the buzzer, Eric Cooper goes glass for the three, but the Rebels went into the locker room with a 33-26 lead. Cooper hit another three to open the second half. Wood countered as he gets the dunk. Then West started doing what he does, the offensive rebound and put back. Then nobody comes out on West, so he just knocks down the jumper. When Vaughn turned it over, Marquise Coleman went the other way for the lay-in, and the UNLV lead was cut to just one. Wood made a baseline move for the bucket, then McCaw and Vaughn both hit threes to keep the Rebels in the lead. Kendrick got a second chance bucket in the lane and it was 48-46 Rebels with just under 10 minutes left. Cooper picked up the hoop and the harm and the three point play gave the Wolfpack their first lead of the game. Once again, the Rebs responded. Doolin drives for the lay in, then the feed to Okonobo and he throws it down. Under three minutes to go, McCaw feeds Okonobo for the deuce and a one point lead. 140 left, shot clock winding down, and Wood hits the triple to open the lead to four, and he is fired up. The Rebels do the job, shoot 49% from the floor, and they pick up their first true road win of the season as they get revenge in Reno, 67-62. You could tell right from the get-go that this was different than the first meeting against Reno. The guys were focused and locked in against these guys. Well, we brought a tremendous sense of urgency from practice floor 
to the game floor. And our guys knew what a big game it was going to Reno and playing. We were not happy with our effort. We were not happy with our sense of urgency. The first time we played Reno, it was coming off the Wyoming-Kansas week, and we just didn't play the way we needed to play. And it, it's a big game for Reno. We always get their best shot, but it needs to be a bigger game for us. And I thought it was in terms of the effort. And, and we played very well in the first half against Reno and then uh, let the lead get away a little bit. We just went through a stretch. We had a hard time scoring, and I thought we were fantastic down the stretch. Made big plays on both ends of the floor and contributions from a lot of different guys. And good luck, Okanobo was fantastic in the game. 13 points, 9 rebounds, 5 blocks. Huge deal for a freshman. You had the 8-point lead at halftime, and then they opened on, I believe, a 12-2 run in the second half. And that's something that we've seen a lot this season, especially in the conference. Can you put your finger on why that's happening with this team? And I think it's been different in different games, but I thought that was really more of execution was about effort. I thought we played hard for the entire 40 minutes, and so I thought when we started making baskets again and executing, we were fine. Uh, again, our whole key for the Reno game was to play with a sense of urgency and, and a sense of hard, great effort the entire game. We did that. We just hit a stretch there in the second half where we just had a hard time making baskets. Last Sunday, we talked about the ability to close out games, and I think we saw that in Reno that this team's starting to kind of get what they need to do to put the nail in the coffin. So well, we've, we've had a lot of experience in close games. Uh, four games in the non-conference, won them all, then we start conference play and have a hard time getting over the hump, even though we were in absolutely every game that we lost, and then three three wins in a row. And we played the entire 45 minutes against Utah State. We talked about that last week. Came back and won a huge game against Reno on Tuesday and then against the Air Force uh, last night. It was, it was such a big game for us to play, and it's a difficult game because we hadn't played Air Force before with this group, and we just were very, very good on the defense event from start to finish. Only one game for the Rebels this week as they travel to Fort Collins to take on Colorado State, and it's a big one. We're back to preview the game in just two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. The Rebels now head into the second half of conference play with a 4-5 and five record. And right out of the gate, they get one of the toughest games on the schedule as they travel to Fort Collins to take on the Rams of Colorado State on Saturday afternoon. Colorado State has a lot of weapons to contain, but front and center is J.J. Avila and Daniel Bejarano, who are both capable of taking games over. The Rams have been in and out of the rankings this season and are right in the thick of the logjam near the top of the Mountain West standings. Offensively, CSU likes to push the pace and has scored in the 90s twice in the last month. But defense has been what's driven head coach Larry Eustachie crazy. Some games, the Rams can lock teams down, but lately, teams have been able to keep up on the pace and have put up big numbers. While the Rebels will have the week to prepare and get some much-needed rest, the Rams will have a border war rivalry game on Wednesday night at Wyoming. Winning in Fort Collins is never easy, but expect UNLV to come in and play in the slugfest. Colorado State does have a lot of weapons. The one nice thing about this spot is you do get a full week to prepare and, and get the legs back, I guess, on this team. How are you going to spend the week getting ready for Colorado State? We are going to spend the week trying to get better as a basketball team. Obviously, we have great respect for Colorado State. They start three fifth-year seniors. They're one of the most experienced teams in the country. They're tough. They're hard-nosed. They, they embody what Larry Eustace, their coach, is all about. But it's the first time I can remember in a long time we've had an opportunity to sustain practice over the course of an entire week. Our first bye week, we played Kansas, and so that took up the bye. And so I think with our group, we have an opportunity to get better this week. And we'll work on our conditioning, we'll work on half court and def defensive and offensive execution. It's, I'm excited to be able to practice, and obviously we understand the challenge of playing against a very, very good Colorado State team on Saturday afternoon. Avila, Bejarano are, are tough guys. How do you attack in terms of, of what you do defensively with them? Do you want to push them back? Uh, out into the three-point part of the uh, the arc? Well, it's going to be a toughness game. Again, Colorado State is extremely tough. They're a very good rebounding team. They play hard. We have to play harder. We have to be tougher. We've got to do a good job on the defensive boards. We all have talked about for some time that one of the huge keys for our season as we go on the stretch is becoming a better defensive rebounding team. We're doing a much better job of taking care of the basketball, but we've got to be tougher on the defensive boards. And so we have to challenge every guy on our roster that when you're in there, we've got to block out. We've got to go get defensive rebounds and keep Colorado State away from 
and second and third opportunities. Fort Collins is another elevation game in Laramie earlier this year. I think maybe it impacted guys towards the end just a tad. What uh, do you do differently in terms of preparation in Fort Collins that you maybe didn't do in Laramie? Well, I think I've got a lot of confidence in our guys. Certainly the group that we're starting, we've got a lot of confidence in those guys. But Jordan Cornish is doing a good job off our bench. Dwayne Morgan brings great energy. S certainly Jalon Kendrick has been fabulous off the bench. Dantley Walker gave us quality minutes against Air Force and I thought changed some women in the game. Just have a lot of confidence in the guys off the bench and I'll continue to play those guys. We're going to need every single guy on our roster uh, to, to give us a chance to be successful in, in, in Moby Arena. Well, one of the players you just mentioned, Jordan Cornish. Up next in the Reb Zone, we are going to be profiling one of the five true freshmen. And it's not just about his basketball skills. Cornish brings something else to the table. Find out what next. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Welcome back inside the Reb Zone. As we said, the Running Rebels have five true freshmen this year, but the baby of the group is Jordan Cornish. He just turned 18 in October, but he's bringing a whole lot of leadership to this UNLV basketball team. Jordan Cornish is the spark plug off the UNLV bench that Dave Rice can call on for some production. I just try to bring energy, you know, and passion to the group and, and just come on and just try to be efficient and not turn the ball over and not take bad shots. It took a natural disaster to trigger Cornish's love of the game. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I figured out basketball was what I wanted to do after Hurricane Katrina. I was a football guy up until eight years old. I moved to Baton Rouge and the coach at the school I went to just told me just to try it out. And ever since then, basketball is my first love and my love. And you can see that love every day. Before the game, it's Cornish, the youngest on the team, who's always in the middle of getting the team hyped. I just try to push them, just go hard. If I have to use the F-bomb every now and then, <laughs> I, I use it. But I just try to really just, every day we just got to go hard. It's the little things that Cornish does on and off the court that has made him stand out. He knows his role and is taking care of the now to open up opportunities for the future. Just a vocal leader on and off the court and a guy that can just bring energy and passion every day, day in and day out. And whatever coach needs me to do, I'll do it. As for this season, Cornish says it's been a roller coaster, but he knows the team has a run in them and can do what they need to do when it counts. Is this team capable of winning three games in three nights? We're definitely capable. I think, in my, my opinion, we're going to win out. And the future is bright. If the freshman five can stick together, this group can be the nucleus of great things. It's part of the reason why we all chose to come together, especially me, because I was the last guy, and I saw good luck. I saw Pat, Rashad, and Wayne coming here, and I knew you can do something special. Every coach likes to have players who are vocal leaders and can bring a team together, and Jordan Cordes appears to be that guy. Jordan Cornish has been fantastic for us. Uh, he's the youngest guy on our roster. Uh, we're excited to have him here. He's shooting over 50% from three, which is, which is a huge number for, for a young guy. But I think more than anything, is just he's tough, and he brings it every single day, whether it's practice or a game. To be able to count on a guy for energy every single time he sets foot on the practice floor on the game floor, that's a big deal for a coach. He's seen his minutes increase throughout the season. And this is somebody who's going to be an integral part of this program's success over the next three years after this season. I am very excited to have Jordan Cornish on our roster. He already, just through 22 games in, in his young career, has helped us win a lot of games. And he's had a big impact on winning. And not just because he's made shots, but from an energy standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, and he just will continue to get better. Anyone like Jordan Cornish, who's a high character guy that works as hard as he has, for us. He just has success in his future. I'm very happy he's going to be a Runner Rebel. All right, Coach, thank you. We're going to take one last break. We're coming back with the Runner Rebels Plays of the Week right after this. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Three wins in a row now, Coach, and it seems like this team's starting to get a stride back. I like the progress we're making. It's a group that's high character. They work hard. Uh, they're coachable, and they come in every day and want to get better. And, and I just like the progress, and I think the future is extremely bright. But uh, we got a stretch run here, and we got an opportunity with a week of practice to, to continue to get better. 
All right, looking forward to seeing you in Fort Collins. Have a good week. Thank you for joining us inside the Reb Zone, and we leave you with the Running Rebels Plays of the Week. Good night. Reb Zone Sports Show was presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications.